Hello everyone. In light of having to postpone our in-person ILS NYC 2022 conference, uh, which was now going to be held in person in New York on April the 22nd, uh, we wanted to run some interviews with the kind sponsors of the event and help to showcase their thought leadership and also thank them for their support. You can still get a ticket for the conference if you haven't yet. They are still available. Um, and as a reminder, it's April the 22nd. Please do visit the Artemis website and you can secure your place at the event today. But for this one of our virtual ILS NYC event videos, I'm delighted to welcome Siobhan Barda, CEO of Amri Syndicate, one of our bronze sponsors for the conference. Hi, Siobhan, welcome. Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here. It's great to see you again. So as ever, we're talking about the development of insurance and securities with one eye to the future, as is always the way with Artemis's events. And one of the things we often talk about is new risks and new sources of risk. And Amri is a reinsurance managing general agent, and you write a diversified book of business and work with capital partners to support that. The ILS market is obviously increasingly keen to access differentiated sources of risk, and this is one of the topics we'll be discussing at the conference in April and Amri is also looking to partner with new and alternative capital sources as well so I thought it would be interesting to hear Siobhan's take on the market opportunity at this point in time. So to begin Siobhan perhaps we could go back to basics and you could give our viewers a, a reminder of what you do and your outlook for the reinsurance market in general. Yeah so you know from my perspective I think that the market remains on the harder end of the scale uh, 2021 was a very active year in terms of NatCat with quite a bit of activity in the form of wind, flood, and fire. Uh, there's also an inflation consideration uh, that we are seeing that has come into the market in a more prevalent way. As a result, there's been a push by reinsurers to improve pricing, terms, and conditions, and we were really cognizant of this at, in 2022. Uh, some reinsurers have really come out quite strongly uh, and identified that rate needs to be really factored into classes like property. Um, and this is partly to do with climate change, that that has to be acknowledged and recognized as a factor within uh, classes of insurance business and reinsurance business. Um, so I think that that's very interesting. Uh, we can see that this is uh, relevant in the amount of capacity that is actually out there in those classes. We are seeing actually limited capacity that is available. And I think that this is something that we'll see moving forward in 2022. Mm. And that's quite healthy that the, uh, the price changes appear to be driven by view of risk and risk aversion as well, which seems healthier than sort of price changes that are driven by available capacity at times in this marketplace. But as I said at the start, ILS investors are increasingly looking for this differentiated source of insurance link returns that they're, they're all keen to add to their portfolios at this point in time. Um, and Siobhan, what type of reinsurance risks do you think the ILS market could develop an appetite for? So <clears throat> ILS investors clearly have an appetite for program business. Hmm. This goes back to the talk I previously gave. Uh, ILS markets are moving into program business because this market is currently hard and expected to hold for 2022 and beyond. Uh, there has been ongoing rate increases in specialty classes commencing in 2018. Program business is a great hedge against traditional ILS classes of property, which is highly not cat exposed. Program business is focused on casualty classes, which means that it's more of a long-term proposal. All program business is written on a quota share model, so it's inherently stable. Also, the structure of relationships means that all parties' interests are aligned for a profitable outcome. This business is written with a very low limit, it is well spread, and these contracts report on a short time scale, on a monthly basis, which frees up balances, pay, the balance, balance is paid for ILS investors to access it's a very effective cash positive structure. Pro program business comprises transportation, GL lines, marine and habitational property. And specialty business can be written in a very compact, low limit structured model. These classes should attract more ILS capacity as their terms, conditions and pricing continue to be very favorable. 
And with these lines, ILS capacity will increase and increasingly flow into portfolios that are well positioned for long term performance. With NATCAT losses posing an ongoing challenge and climate change to be factored in, we believe ILS investors will seek lower limit exposures with less NATCAT exposure. And at Amory, we have developed a very specific model to write this type of business. Yes, it's interesting. You you really hit on one of the trends that we're seeing sort of since the middle of last year, I suppose, as investors increasingly looking for something a little different, a little less nat cat exposed, because there's plenty of that available to them. Yes. But these these specialty areas that you speak of, I mean, how how, how have rates developed there at the recent renewals? So <clears throat> overall, re reinsurers have achieved better pricing uh, than last year and the upward trend continues. The market started this process of hardening, like I said, in 2018. And this trend is expected to continue through 2022. And we really feel it will hold and move beyond that. Uh, we've seen double digit rate increases in transportation lines, GL lines, habitational property. The, you know, the only outliers I would say would be workers' compensation and marine. There seems to be plenty of appetite and capacity for those classes. Right, interesting. So one of the things that at Amri you work very hard on is the, the data and systems you have in place to enhance the efficiency of your business. Um, for these specific lines of insurance business, how, how important is that as a differentiator, do you feel? Very important. Uh, we have developed a very specific model to write program business, and we have a very high level of expertise. We have an in-house database that has been built out over our 20 years of tra trading, and we have proprietary software. The data and analytics functions are integral to the model. At Amri, we have invested heavily in creating the Amdex, which is our in-house proprietary software. Through this application, we have automated the multi-cross departmental processes to make Amdex a one-stop solution and integrate all our departments, underwriting, analytics, legal, and finance into one centralized database. Our biggest responsibility in writing this business is the monitoring of portfolios. We track all portfolios and we report on a 45 day time window at the end of the month. This means we obtain results in real time and we can track all accounts relative to our expectations. If we have any deviation in performance, we can go back and take corrective action very quickly and effectively. It also means that we're able to provide a, you know, monthly reconciliation and accounting on the portfolios that we write to pay balances across on a monthly basis, which creates excellent cash flow. Uh, this class of business should attract more ILS capacity for those unique features. Cash balances are paid out, so the ILS investor could potentially have access to their money at regular intervals across the year and there is complete transparency in the structure of the reporting mm. yeah that that's again very interesting because it speaks to a, the potential for collateralization to be sort of more flexibly managed across the life cycle of these books of business as well which is potentially appealing um, requires a bit of structuring but potentially very appealing to investors as it allows them to make their capital work a bit harder for them yes and on, on the subject of capacity do, do you see enough to surface service these areas of the market and and do, do you, I mean, clearly, clearly you, you would like to see more ILS capital coming in to play a role in these specialty areas of the market as well? Very much so. Currently, I would say there is a lack of capacity in program business. Uh, let me caveat that because program business does require a special skill set. Um, you know, you need a, a company structured in a very particular way. At Amri, we have the required expertise and we can effectively write this business on the ground. We're based in Dallas, Texas, which is essentially a hub of program business. I can see ILS capacity taking an increasing, increasing role in this market at this time because it's such a good, you know, the timing of the cycle is so strong. Uh, as climate change also continues to unfold and we see severity of NATCAT events continue, if you look at 2021, it was a very active NATCAT year. 
you know, program business is the perfect hedge against NatCat exposures that are inherent in the ILS model. Unlike a traditional ILS portfolio, program business is written with a very low limit. It's quota share. This means it's very possible to build a significant portfolio of quota share business that is inherently stable and built for the long term. Uh, as I've described the cash flow nature of the business, it's almost like a cash bond as it pays out monthly with long-term stability and sustainability. So we really believe that ILS uh, capacity will gravitate into specialty lines of business, which are inherently stable and therefore more predictable than classic uh, ILS exposures. And specialty business can be structured in a very highly disciplined and cash positive way. Great, thank you, Siobhan. And obviously it really helps to have experienced partners such as yourselves when you're trying to get into this type of a, an area of the insurance market. Um, finally, before we close, what is the focus for you and Amri through 2022? Where, where do you see the opportunity to grow your business this year? So we see lots of opportunities on the horizon as the cycle and you know the market remains very favorable for our business model. So rates in the lines that we operate are very strong. And although there is a social inflation consideration, we have a claims management company. So the claims management function has served us well in managing this development and anticipating where the market is going to go to. As you know, we are structured for the long term and we see ourselves as a hedge against traditional NatCat business in that we seek non-NatCat exposures with very low limits. This allows us to really spread the dynamic of the portfolio that we write. And I have to say this, this focus has served us extremely well and we remain highly profitable. So for 2022, we are seeking to bring in new strategic ILS partners, investors to replace lost capacity in certain lines of business. And we are also expecting to launch uh, our ENS carrier, ASI authorized out of Arizona. Exciting times then. I uh, wish you luck for the rest of this year. And th thank you very much for sparing some time to speak with me today. And thank you to everyone at Amri for the support for this conference. Um, once again, thank you, Siobhan. It was great to see you. Thanks so much, Steve.